Hello everyone, welcome to DJ Nettie Darkpool's Nettie's Notables, episode 7, part 2! Yeah! Oh my goodness! It's been Teenage Years, part 2. Also dedicated, it's me, Jonathan. Jonathan, hello again! Like I said, I would make the second part, and I did. See? Aren't I nice? Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Anyway, my first part of this series shows, sure, this episode, I keep calling it a series, but it's an episode. First part of this episode shows the happy times of my teenage years. All those happy moments where I sing my heart out, didn't care, the world, that kind of thing. They're the good days. Now, I want take things down a little notch and talk about something a bit more serious. Excuse me. I belched. But anyway, I want to talk about something a bit more serious, like the fact that I was bullied and my dark days of teenage years called teenage angst. And every teenager goes through it. Everyone. Everyone under the sun go through with it. And if they don't go through with it, they're not a teenager. But, um, yes, I went through it. I had dark days. Many dark days. They came sporadically. Um, where I didn't feel very worthy of myself. I didn't feel like... I belonged anywhere. I didn't feel like I um I didn't really like myself very well at all. There was those days, those times in my moments in my life where I hated who I was. I really despised myself. To the point I looked in the mirror, I'm like I'd almost puked. Oh my god, you're so ugly, stuff like this. I say this to myself all the time. When I was going through those tough times. And yes, the lowest of lows I actually wanted to end it all. And um, I tried a couple of times. Not many people know about that. But I did try a couple of times. And unsuccessfully, thank goodness. Because, you know. I felt really bad about myself. I didn't feel like I was worthy enough of this world. But something uh, stronger than I am, I don't really call it a god or a religion or anything like that because I'm not religious, um, uh, stopped me from doing that. I um, had lots of, yes, I had lots of friends. What I thought were my friends ended up being fake friends. I had friends who used me to get at my sister. I had friends who took advantage of me financially. Um, yeah, I've seen and done most things that you probably could or cannot imagine. Um... I've been through the ringer, for the way. Put the ringer and came out the other side smiling. I don't know how I did it, but I did. This is how I got through my dark days. I took a pen and paper. Because no computers back then. Well, it's not very many. There was like, what? Word Perfect 5.1 or something. As monochrome, no internet, that kind of thing. So, um... I used to use a computer or a piece of paper and a book. Oh, a book. I used to keep books upon books upon books. Exercise books. Notebooks. Any kind of stationery I could possibly think of because to do again, I got. And I started writing. I wrote my first poem in 1991 and then stopped. To this day, I still write. The best stuff I wrote is when I was in my teens, but that's because I wrote it 
during those dark times. And they're the ones that are most meaningful for me. And um, I wrote those between the age of, you know, when I was in high school kind of thing. And I got one published, I think, in a book. I don't remember how well-known it was or anything. The book wasn't. It was probably locally published or something, but nothing. You know, I'll never be a published poet or anything that, that I'm aware of. Um, but my poetry was my therapy. It got me through my toughest times. It got me through... Um, it made me feel better for the time being. Like, it made me realize that life isn't that bad. And um, once I got those bad feelings out on paper, it, it felt like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Like, a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders and moved away. And that's what my writing meant to me at the time. And that's how I got rid of the dark days that I had. I didn't... There's no such thing as self-mutilation that I hear about today. Um, I'm sure there was such thing as it, but it was just wasn't heard of. Um, it's not as well known as it is today. Um, I... I was bullied. I was called names. I was pushed around. I was, you know, took advantage of. Um, not sexually, thank goodness. But I was, you know, I was put into this situation where I felt alone most of the time because I was up in my room during my dark days, and I blast my music. Didn't hear it all of the house. And my dad was come upstairs and turn it down. I'm like, no, dad. You know. I totally understand that. I mean, my room was my sanctuary. It really was my sanctuary. It's my way of, you know, being by myself and being me and being as ugly as I was back then because I felt myself as ugly. I don't now, but I did then. And um, I just, I don't think I'm God's gift either, but I think, you know, I don't think I'm an alright person. I try to be as nice as I can be. And I think, you know, I try to be as, happy as I can be, try to motivate people and try to help people as much as possible. I think that's why I'm brought into this earth. I think I was meant to be a motivational speaker or something like that because I like helping people. I've always been one of those people who likes to give advice to others and yet not take my own advice. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Um... I've been to a situation where um, uh, Facebook, for example, people vent on Facebook their most deepest, darkest secrets and how depressed they are and how alone they are and how quote-unquote bored they are or how this, that, and the other thing they are when they're doing the next whatever Personally, I mean, I use Facebook to publish things that I want people to know about. But I don't really put personal stuff there. Like my true, true, true feelings. Like when I have a dark day, and even today, like I do get depressed from time to time. Um, I'm still human, not superhuman. I don't have like... Um, I do have emotions other than being happy and smiling all the time. Um, it's not healthy not to. So, but the thing is, the hardest part is getting out of that. That rot thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to think positively again and 
get out of this. I mean, when I was a teenager, I constantly complained about everything. Nothing was good enough for me. I was never satisfied with anything I was doing. Nothing. So I totally understand what you guys are going through, honestly. I know I'm talking to you teenagers out there because I know there's a lot of you in the YouTube community, in the Sims community in particular, that are teenagers and I talk to all the time. And I'm talking to you guys, like, seriously, life isn't that bad. Be happy with who you are. Trust me, it gets better. I can relate. I don't want you to feel like, oh, she's so old. You can't talk to her. She's like my mother. You know, I mean, she's old enough to be my mom. She will never understand how I feel. Wrong. Dude, I totally do understand. Seriously, I really do. Um, I understand what it feels like to be alone. Even to this day, I still feel lonely sometimes. So I live alone. Um, thank goodness I have my cat, which is shaved, by the way. If he comes around, I'll show him off. But he's probably sleeping right now. But... If it wasn't for my cat, I'd be going stir-crazy. But that's another story for another time. I just want to end things off here and saying, you guys, get one big word of advice. I love you. All of you. Young, old, I don't care if you're my age or younger. I do not care. Age is, not a, age is only my number to me. I love every each one of you. Are you my friend? Yes. Are you be there for me? Sure. I treat you the way you want to be treated. And people treat me the way I want to be treated. And that way it's respect. Respect is not given. It's, res it's, it's earned, right? So the way I see it is, if you treat me well, I'll treat you well. Vice versa. So that's the golden rule when it comes to people. And how to treat them. Treat them as well as you treat yourself. If you don't feel like you're worthwhile yourself, then you're not going to treat other people this with the same kind of respect, will you? No, you won't. So, that's one thing I've learned about myself. Is that I have the biggest heart in the world. I really do. I have a heart for every single one of you. And I love every one of you. That is very dear to my heart. There's too many to mention here. To give you any shout outs. Because I'll be here to doomsday. Giving out shout outs to people that I adore. On this YouTube channel. Like seriously. YouTube has brought me my second family. Seriously. I've never been so happy. And not... not not alone anymore and, and and feeling that you know okay this whole thing about me being a mom and to a lot of you because you're so young and stuff I don't mind that anymore it doesn't bother me if you want to call me mom go right ahead I don't really care if you cast me as a mom as a voice actress I don't care I'll do that too I, I love it it's I got maternal instincts so I don't mind. I'll have virtual kids everywhere I go. So, you know, I really don't mind. And I want to help each and every one of you. If you guys go through, if you feel like you have nobody to talk to, uh, this goes out to anybody. I, I don't care who you are. And if you know me or not, just send me a private message. And... Um, if you don't know me, send me a private message. Say hi. I'm not going to bite your head off. The least I can do is reply to you. And I reply to all my messages. So, um, I just want to show you guys that I'm there for you. And that's the end of my uh, teenage years. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure it's a bit more serious than the last one. But uh, things need to be said, right? I mean... I want to show you guys that, you know, I've been through the 
I can relate to you guys. As in, you guys as in teenage years, teenagers these days. I can relate to how you're feeling on the inside. And how you react to it on the outside is completely up to you. Like I said to John the other day, I said, you cannot, the only thing you can control that comes out of your mouth, no one else's. So that's the honest to God truth. And you can only control about what comes out of your own mouth, not anyone else's. So you can't really tell anyone else what to do and stuff like that. But you can guide them in the right direction. Try to, anyway. But anyway, uh, that's my bit of motivational positivity for today. And I'm sorry it was so dark and serious today, but it's just need to be said. I mean, it just, anyway, I'll talk about social media next time and how it makes me mad sometimes. And, um, yeah. See y'all later. I love you all. See ya.